Some cards require maintenance cost in order for them to remain on the field. And in this list, we'll go over 10 cards that have some of the worst maintenance costs in the game. And at number 10, we have the Golden Castle of Stromberg. This card has the maintenance cost where during your standby phase, you must banish the top 10 cards of your deck face down, or else destroy this card. So in the average 40 card deck, you'd only be able to keep this card on the field for 3 turns, before you wouldn't have enough cards in your deck in order to banish for its effect. And in Duel Links, you'd only really have one turn if you ran a 20 card deck. But here's the thing about this card, and why it's at one of the lower spots on this list at number 10. This card's maintenance cost is actually a benefit in a high performing rogue deck. There's a monster known as Grand Maju, who gains more attack for the amount of cards you have banished, and Golden Castle of Stromberg allows you to contribute to Grand Maju's attack power total, while also having good effects on the field, as Golden Castle allows you to give up your normal summon for the turn in order to special summon a monster from its archetype from your deck, which is a really strong effect. And it also gives you battle protection, where if your opponent tries to attack you, their monsters are automatically destroyed and they take life point damage equal to that monster's attack. So it just straight up gives you pure battle immunity unless your opponent is attacking with a monster that's immune to destruction effects, in addition to it being able to special summon a monster from your deck. This card is kind of worth that maintenance cost, so it's not really a bad card, just a good example of what kind of maintenance cost we'll be talking about on this list. And at number 9, we have Destructive Draw. This card has a maintenance cost where you simply pay 700 life points during your end phase. And that's a pretty light maintenance cost to be honest, but here's what's unique about this one, is that if you can't pay the maintenance costs, it will instead just set your life points to zero, and is the only card in the game with a maintenance cost that does this. Because normally if you can't pay a maintenance cost, the card will just destroy itself. Or if it's a maintenance cost that's not optional, and you don't have enough life points to pay it, the card will just destroy itself rather than have you lose the game. However, if the maintenance cost is not optional and you have exactly the amount of life points to pay, the card will basically make you lose the game. But Destructive Draw is the only card with a maintenance cost like this that specifically has an effect in place which will make you lose the game if your life points are lower than the maintenance cost rather than having the card destroy itself. Now, as to what this card actually does, is if you don't have any cards in your hand during your draw phase, you get to draw one additional card. So not a half bad effect. And it also has an additional effect where if this card is removed from the field, you take 3000 points of damage. So in addition to its mandatory life point cost, and the fact that you take a huge chunk of life point damage if it's removed from the field, this card is full of all kinds of negatives for an effect that won't even take place until your next turn, and kind of requires you to have no cards in your hand at all times. So it's not a very good card, but its maintenance cost is honestly not super bad either, because just 700 life points per turn isn't a big deal, as there's cards like Mirror Wall, which have a 2000 life point maintenance cost per turn. Although Mirror Wall won't make you lose the game if you can't pay it, whereas Destruction Draw will, which is why I think it should make a place on this list, if at a low spot. And at number 8, we have Amorphage Pride. This is a pendulum monster that, while it's in the pendulum zone, neither player takes effect damage. And then, during your standby phase, you must tribute a monster or else this card is destroyed. Now, basically all of the Amorphage monsters have this maintenance cost, while they exist as a spell card in the pendulum zone, I just kind of have pride on here because it has one of the worst effects out of all of them, as all it does is negate effect damage, where some of the others negate stuff like all spell cards, trap effects, etc, etc, much more useful things and worthy of their maintenance costs. Whereas Pride isn't really worth the maintenance costs. It's not a super good effect to have in order to tribute a monster every turn to keep it alive. That being said, Amorphages do have cards which offset their maintenance costs, as their field spell card will allow you to draw a card every time you pay their maintenance cost, which does a real good job of offsetting it as it is a pendulum archetype, so if you drew some monsters, you can just special summon those monsters from your hand easier than you could in any other kind of archetype. And they also have a continuous spell card, which allows you to search out Amorphage cards if you pay this card's maintenance cost. They do have ways to gain advantage off of their maintenance costs, but it's still not a very good maintenance cost, and does make this list, just again, not at a very high spot, because you do need to play the other cards in order to offset the cost 
And if those cards on the field are destroyed, then you're kind of stuck paying this card's really bad maintenance cost. And at number 7, we have number 30, Acid Golem of Destruction. While this card is on the field, the player who controls this card cannot special summon monsters. And also, during each of your standby phases, you must detach one Exceeds material from this card, or else take 2000 points of damage. And while it has no Exceeds materials, it can't attack. Basically, it's a 3000 attack beat stick with generic materials for a rank 3 monster. And the purpose of this card is to have a big beat stick for rank 3 plays. So, having all of these downsides to this card, as none of its effects are beneficial to you, in addition to having a maintenance cost, only exists because of its high attack power value. And in fact, this card has two maintenance costs. Well, more like mandatory negative effects, as they're not true maintenance costs. Where, if you cannot detach an Exceeds material from this card, then you take 2000 points of damage instead. And this damage is kind of like destructive draw damage, where it can actually cause you to lose the duel. So here's what's great about this card, and why it's not at a higher spot on this list. This card's maintenance cost is so bad, that it's actually a really good card to give to your opponent. Because one of its effects is also to lock you out of special summoning monsters. So if you bring this card out of the extra deck without any Exceeds materials, using a card like Bahamut Shark, then you can just give control of this card to your opponent with something like a creature swap, and your opponent will be locked out of special summoning monsters. So they can't just link this card away with the link monster. They can't attack with this card, because it needs Exceeds materials to attack, and they just take 2000 points of damage during each of their standby phases. All of these things are actually pretty good, and it's a pretty decent lockdown. This card kind of has one of those effects where it's so bad, that it actually becomes good, because you can give it to your opponent. Something that's not really the case with all the other cards I'm about to talk about. And at number 6, we have Koaki Miru Valafar. Now, the entire Koaki Mirror archetype is full of monsters who have a maintenance cost, where you either have to send the specific spell card called Iron Core of Koaki Mirror from your hand to the graveyard, or do something else, usually like revealing a monster type in your hand. And if you can't fulfill these maintenance costs, the card will destroy itself. And out of all of the Koaki Mirror monsters, this is one of the few which doesn't have an alternative to having to discard an Iron Core of Koaki Miru from your hand, and it's also a level 8 monster. So it's harder to bring out the normal way as you have to tribute summon it, or special summon it in some other kind of inconvenient way. And this card's effects aren't really worth its maintenance cost or how difficult it is to be summoned normally, as all it does is have piercing damage and cannot be destroyed by the effects of trap cards. It's not immune to trap cards, mind you. It's just if your opponent's using something like a Mirror Force, it won't be destroyed by the card, but if they're using Drowning Mirror Force, it will be stopped by that card. And it can also tribute some of itself for one less tribute, as long as you're tributing a Koaki Mirror Monster, in an archetype that's not really about tribute summoning. Now, there is another level 8 Koaki Mirror Monster called Koaki Mirror Maximus, who has the same attack power value, but also has a way to special summon itself from the hand, and can destroy a card on the field, and also has an alternative maintenance cost, where you can discard a Koki Mirror monster from your hand to the graveyard, instead of an Iron Core. Maximus is just so much better, with a much better effect to destroy one card per turn, it's kind of a wonder why they gave Volifar such mediocre effects, and a tougher time bringing itself out, and uh, that's kind of why it's on this list. It's a pretty mediocre card which just also happens to have an annoying maintenance cost. And at number 5, we have the Regulation of Tribe. While this card is on the field, you can declare one type of monster, and monsters of that type cannot declare attacks. So, if your opponent is using a deck full of one monster type, this card can completely shut them down from attacking you while it's face up on the field. However, it has a maintenance cost, where you must tribute one monster on your side of the field during each of your standby phases. And the reason this card almost never saw any play, is because it was basically considered a worse stall card, similar to other options like Threatening Roar or Wabaku, as you wouldn't really want to pay its maintenance cost during your next turn. That being said, this card does see play in Duel Links, inside of Fortune Lady decks, which are actually meta, because Fortune Ladies have a Synchro Monster, called Fortune Lady Every, where during your standby phase, this card will increase its level by 1 and then allow you to banish one phase-up monster your opponent controls. 
And after you use this effect, you would just tribute her for the maintenance cost of tribe. Because every has another effect, where during your opponent's end phase, you can banish another spellcaster monster from your graveyard in order to special summon this card, who will then be available during your standby phase to banish another one of your opponent's monsters and then allow you to tribute it in order to pay the maintenance cost of tribe. So it's kind of funny to see this card, which saw almost no play in the TCG because there was so much better stall options in the game, actually see success in Duel Links because of how few battle phase stall cards there are and that one random new Syngra monster just happened to combo well with its effect. It still has a pretty bad maintenance cost, but there is a deck that's able to play around it without really losing too much advantage, which I think is kinda great. I love it when bad cards see success in meta decks. And at number 4, we have the Unfriendly Amazon. This card is kinda like Acid Golem in that it's a high attack monster which has a maintenance cost for its high attack on the field as it's a level 4 monster with 2,000 attack, whose only effect is a maintenance cost, where you must tribute one of your other monsters on your side of the field during your standby phases, otherwise this card is destroyed. And when this card came out, a 2,000 attack level 4 monster was actually pretty good, especially since this card benefits from Amazon support. I should mention that the good Amazon support didn't come out until many years after this card first came out, so this card saw almost no play when it was first released, and was kinda bad by the time the good Amazon support cards came out, as there's lots of vanilla monsters with 2000 attack and no negative side effects to them now. And unlike Amorphage Pride and the Regulation of Tribe, there isn't a good way to play around this card's maintenance costs, which is why it has a higher spot on this list than those other two cards, who essentially have the same maintenance cost, only better support or effects. And at number 3, we have the Spiritual Energy Settle Machine. While this card is on the field, spirit monsters do not have to activate their effects, which return them to the hand during your end phase. So this card basically allows you to ignore the maintenance cost of a whole archetype of monsters. However, this card has its own maintenance cost, where you must discard one card from your hand during each of your end phases. And if you do not do this, the card is destroyed. And you also return all face-up spirit monsters on the field to the hand. Now, preventing spirit monsters from returning to the hand is a pretty decent effect, but not good enough for a discard once per turn maintenance cost. Especially since it also has a negative effect, where if this card is destroyed on the field, you return all spirit monsters to the hand anyway. Which is why I gave this card a pretty high spot on this list at number 3. And at number 2, we have Armor X. This is another high attack level 4 monster with a maintenance cost, similar to the unfriendly Amazon. Except this card has 2400 attack instead of 2000, and has more restrictions placed on it because of its higher attack power value. Now, the strongest level 4 monster in the game has 2500 attack, so Armor X is tied with 4 other monsters for 2nd place, in the highest attack power value of a level 4 monster category. And because this card has such a high attack power value, it has a terrible maintenance cost where during each player's standby phases, you must remove one spell counter from your side of the field, otherwise this card is destroyed. Now, spell counters are kind of weird when it comes to cards that can place counters on things, as you can only place spell counters on cards that are specifically designed to hold spell counters on them. And Armor X himself, despite needing to remove spell counters for its maintenance cost, can't actually hold any spell counters on himself. So you are 100% reliant on other cards on the field in order to pay this card's maintenance cost. And on top of that, this card can't even attack the same turn it's summoned, no matter how you summon it. So it has summon sickness, similar to tune monsters. So you have to pay this card's maintenance cost two times before you're even able to use this card for an attack. And here's the thing about maintenance costs that I don't think I really had to mention anywhere else in this video yet, you can't negate maintenance costs. So, while you may be able to negate Armor Axe's effect in order for it to attack the same turn it summoned, you still have to pay its maintenance cost during both player standby phases, otherwise this card will destroy itself. And it's because of this maintenance cost that this card never saw any play in high level level 4 monster beatdown decks, which were all about negating the effects of high attack easy to summon monsters. Because while you can negate the bad effect of a card like Chainsaw Insect, who has the same stats as Armor X, you'd still be required to pay this card's maintenance costs, or it would still destroy itself, 
even if its effects were negated. Which is why maintenance costs are kind of their own specific thing, and why acid golem destruction doesn't really count as having a bad maintenance cost, because its maintenance cost is actually an effect, so it can be negated. Uh, I guess it's just another reason why acid golem had a low spot on this list, I should say. It has a maintenance cost-like effect, so I would think it counts. Anyways, that's unimportant. Let's go on to the number one spot. And at number one, we have the Rocket Arrow Express. This card has the maintenance cost, where you need to send your entire hand to the graveyard during your standby phase, and is without a doubt the worst maintenance cost in the game. Because the card itself is not really worth that maintenance cost, as what this card is, is a level 10 high attack monster with a negative effect, similar to Armor X, where you can only special summon this card if you control no cards on the field, and it can't be summoned in other ways. You also can't conduct the battle phase this turn as special summoned, and you cannot activate any other card effects or set any cards while this card is face up on the field. So if you play this card and keep it, it's basically the only thing you're going to be playing. And you also can't even attack with its high attack power value of 5000, until your next turn. And since it prevents you from activating other cards or effects, it's almost impossible to negate this card's effect of your own volition. And then on top of all of this card's negative effects, it also has the worst maintenance cost in the game, where you have to send your entire hand to the graveyard during your standby phase, i.e. right after you just drew a card for your turn. The only way to use this card in an effective way is basically to use it as tribute fodder, as it does special summon itself from your hand and doesn't use up your normal summon or lock you out of other summons for the turn. So, if you tribute this card to bring out a Great Maju Garzette, you could have a 10,000 attack monster on the field with a pretty easy two card combo. Which isn't half bad, I guess. Alright, and that's the list. So a vast majority of the maintenance costs in the game are just to pay life points. And maintenance costs aren't very common on cards nowadays, so there wasn't a whole lot to choose from and it was kind of hard to find ones that I did get on this list. So there's a good chance I might have missed some, and if you think there's any other worst maintenance cost cards in the game, I'd love to hear about them down in the comments. And if you liked the video, then you'd probably like all the other Yu-Gi-Oh! Top 10s on this channel. There should be about 70 of them by now, and I created them all with the intention that they could be binge watched in the future. So I'd recommend you watch that playlist if you enjoyed this video.